Yeah, so anyway, Pete, talking about hairy meat, um, I used to work with a guy who liked to go out at lunchtime to get some fried chicken. Right. And the, the town that we were in actually had a KFC, but that was a good sort of 10-minute walk away, whereas just around the corner there was a kind of like off-brand... Oh, like a, like a BFC or a DFC or any other letter. Yeah, so it was it was TFC because of the town beginning with the letter T. I, I think I might know the one you're referring to. We used to call it THC. Go on. For town name Hairy Chicken. Oh, because bristles. <laughs> every chicken, Whiskers. every chicken piece looked like it could do with a bit of a, a filler shave, a bit of uh, yeah waxing mm. before it goes in the fryer. Anyway, are we going to start the podcast, Tom? <clears throat> We're already going. Yeah. Oh, are we? Okay. Oops. I, I know it's interesting that we've both got our laptops today. Yeah. I want to talk about my laptop in a bit. Mm. How are you getting on with your razor? Yeah, I like it. Mm. Is it? I've been meaning to ask you, is that the one with the sort of multicolored keyboard? It does glow in various colors of the spectrum. Yeah. Does it cycle through them? It can do, yeah. Okay, and you can you can choose different keys for different ones? Yeah. Sort of chameleon-esque. Well, uh, this one you can't, but on others, others you can. Individual key lighting, yeah. Very nice, yes. very nice. Mm. Did you hear about the chameleon that couldn't change colour? No. He had a reptile dysfunction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Goodness me, that was, that was actually a funny joke. Speaking of razors, I forgot to have a shave today. Mm. I oh. used to hate facial hair, but I found it's grown on me. So, <laughs> so yeah, there we go. I'll go in with the dad joke because yeah, you did you. an actually funny joke. Uh, welcome everybody to the Constant Geekery podcast, and we've uh, determined that this is episode twenty-four of season two, which actually makes it our thirty-fifth episode, and. Um, Erin, who is sat here today helping us, suggested that we should have got special hats for the occasion. Because that's normally what you do when you celebrate an occasion is you get a hat. Especially when it's, you know, episode 24 of season two. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that critical milestone that everyone mm. strives for. Indeed. Uh, but we're very happy to hit that milestone. Obviously, we were away last week because uh, I was enjoying some vacation time, as they say in the United States. Or annual leave, as we say in boring land. We do, or holiday, yeah. Mm. Um, but we're back again, and we've got some stuff to talk about. Uh, mainly, our main topic today, we're going to talk about the Steam Deck. Mm. And some people might be thinking, I don't know what a Steam Deck is. Oh, you're in for a treat. In for a treat. Um, um, we've got a couple of rumours as well that we've we've spotted. We, we want to introduce a new segment to the podcast called The Rumour Mill, where we will select each week some appropriate rumours to uh, discuss and see whether or not they are worthy. Yeah, various degrees of likelihood. Mm. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, but first of all, we, we wanted to talk about laptop, because you 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 want a new laptop, don't you, Pete? Well, yeah, because obviously you've got your, your iPad with the M1 in it, and I know you're absolutely loving that, especially Word. How's that going for you, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Shall I, t shall I tell the listeners slash viewers about... Yeah, do that while I slurp my tea. Uh, so I have found if you're using Microsoft Word on the M1 iPad and you you rescale it using the pinch to zoom thing and then continue typing using the, um, the what do they call it? The keyboard. Type cover, the magic keyboard. Um, it gets really laggy to the point where um, you're pressing the keys and it takes a few seconds for the, for the letters to appear in Microsoft Word. Are you sure that's actually the device, or is it just your brain struggling to keep up? It's entirely possible that it's my brain struggling to keep up. We'll have to get one of the youngsters to check. <laughs> one of the youth. Hmm. Um, yeah, quite a disturbing thing to see. Though. I, there's no reason for that to happen. So uh, I suspect it's bad code in Microsoft Word, because uh, I haven't seen it in other apps, in fairness. Yeah, yeah, probably. Hmm. Anyway, you've you've got your M1 iPad, and as as... Most listeners will know I've I've restrained myself from getting one because I don't need one. You know, I'm perfectly happy with the iPad I've got, which is a couple of generations back. But I do like 
the M1 MacBook Air. I like the fact it doesn't have any fans and it's nice and quiet and very quick. Lovely camera, all the ML cores making you look pretty. Uh, um, but I do like the form factor of my 16 but 16 inch MacBook Pro. Mm. Um, and I want to know if Apple are actually going to get one out before the next sort of typical iPhone event in September. So will there be an August event? Because there was rumours going around that we would get some in the summer. Yeah, and, uh, you know, well, you know, I, I thought that we, they would get announced at WWDC, but they didn't. So, um, And a lot of people think they were going to be because of that hashtag yeah, in the tweets. We don't know. Not convinced about that. Um, it's an interesting topic, and it's one that I've just recorded a video about this morning. And I say interesting, uh, and I probably should deploy the air quotes there, because it looked to me like Tom and Erin were about to fall asleep at several points during the recording of that video. But, okay. Uh, in, in other news, exciting new video coming to the main channel but this they're week. But they're not the target audience, they're I not, think. They're not. I, I've seen, actually, from the analytics that we, we don't appeal to the youth. No. Um, it's it's more in the sort of middle-aged male category. Maybe we ought to start a TikTok channel in order to appeal to the youth. What's TikTok? Oh, it's something clocks do, I think. Hmm. So... Uh, I made a video anyway about do you need more than an M1? And you made an interesting comment earlier when we were talking about this, <coughs> that if Apple brought out the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 in it, you'd actually be happy with that. Yeah, I'd go for the m maximum RAM available, but yeah, I would be. Because mm. it is the form factor that I, I just find the 13-inch MacBook Air a bit too small for me yeah. and the work I do. And, and this is one of the points I made in the video is that if you're waiting for a particular form factor, if you want the, the larger laptop or you want a larger iMac, uh, you are stuffed at the moment. You can't have M1. You can't have Apple Silicon. And you don't really want to go for an Intel one right now. Not, uh, I, I'd still say the, the top of the range iMac is worth having. In iMac? A, the iMac. But no, I wouldn't go for a 16-inch MacBook Pro at the moment. Unless you absolutely need one. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't wait because you need to work now. Yeah, then by all means have one, because it's, it's not a rubbish computer by any stretch of the imagination. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. And I think, you know, uh, the ports are the other thing, of course. Four ports is quite useful. Mm. But I have to state, I want a new MacBook Pro mm. 16 with an Apple Silicon chip in it. I don't need it. This mm. is still perfectly adequate. It's fine. It does what it needs to do. And this kind of brings me on to Pete's bug bugbear of the week, which is the current crop of insert piece of current technology still good in 2021 type videos we're getting at the moment so you'll get you know something like macbook air m1 macbook air still good in 2021 it's like really annoying really <laughs> annoying. Quite annoying we don't need any of this we don't need any of these things we've got perfectly adequate stuff but i want one hmm. well that and that's how they get you because we, we all want the newest the newest thing um Interesting to state, though, of course, that the, the M1 chip is, in fact, faster for CPU performance, both single-threaded and multi-threaded, than the top i9, which you don't have in yours. Yeah, all right. Okay. Don't rub it in. But the top i9 that you can get in the 16-inch MacBook Pro is actually not, in, in benchmarks, it's not as quick as the M1. No. Uh, there are tasks where the i9 will beat the M1. But when you're talking about the... This model, which is the six-core i7, I'd say the M1 is a is likely to be better. I, I imagine that's your experience, anyway. Yeah, definitely, and it's a lot quieter. The fan noise. I see. This is the thing that really irritates me about the Razer. So this has got 11th gen Intel in it, and I have to say it is superb. It is a really good chip, but the fans come on for a pastime, hmm. and often you you think sort of sat doing nothing at all, and the fans start going nuts. And, and some people might be wondering, well, is that a problem? We've always had fans, and we've always had fans come on, and that is true. You know, that's that's a, a legacy of Intel uh, x86 architecture, sorry. But I think it's become more noticeable now that everyone's video conferencing a lot more because of, you know, lockdowns and pandemics, because what tends to happen, particularly with the design of a lot of MacBooks, is that it tends to blow across the microphone. So you, you, I've found it with a no, number of people that work in our agency, um, you're kind of having a chat with them and it sounds like they're in a gale because the fans are on and it's blowing up off the microphone. Interesting. Mm. 
I, I do remember about my 15 inch MacBook Pro, which is the last <clears> big one that I I had it, but the fan just went nuts on it all the time. Yeah, mine did. This this is better. Mm -hmm. The airflow in this is better, but it still does come on some of the time. Once you've experienced the M1 MacBook Air with absolute silence, it's very difficult to then tolerate the fan noise that we used to find acceptable. You yeah. notice that? It is, it's, degree, it's, a, it's a bit like having an electric car, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And noticing that you can, you know, it's much easier to sneak up on pedestrians. <laughs> Pete, we, we don't talk about your side work <laughs> during the podcast. Uh, um, let's move on, shall we, to the, to the Steam Deck. Now, um, I, I posted a poll on the, the channel a week ago. I said, will you be re reserving a Steam Deck today? What were the option and choices? It, it, I don't think I remember you seeing, seeing that. Go on. I didn't I didn't do any comedy options this time. I just did, because there are three models, so it's one of those, or yes, but I haven't decided which one. And then the final option I, I did was, what's a Steam Deck? How 640 many? people voted, Okay. of which 65% of people went for, what's a Steam Deck? Shall we tell them? Yeah. Well, it's... It's, ba it's basically an Atari Lynx. <laughs> And everyone's now going to go, what's the Atari Lynx? And they're going to be looking up and getting really disappointed. No, no, no. I it's think, not. I think our, not. our target market will probably remember what an Atari Lynx is. I had an Atari Lynx. I had the the second edition Atari Lynx. Uh, I had the first edition. The long, thin one that yeah. was about a metre wide. It was a metre wide. It broke at one point, and I actually actually was able to fix it myself, which I was quite proud of. Uh, wouldn't be able to do that today. <laughs> no. Users, well, it wasn't technically user serviceable, but I made it thus. Um, but... The reason I say the Steam Deck is like an Atari Lynx is because really it was the Atari Lynx that established that sort of handheld form factor that you now see on, say, a Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great form factor. Uh, and I also like the fact it had two cutely named chips in it. So not M1 or, you know, Threadripper or anything like that. It was Mikey and Susie. <laughs> that was the chips the Lynx had in it. Yeah, they weren't very powerful either, were they? No, but With Calif a name like Mikey and Susie, it's not. Nice. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes they couldn't be bothered. It's just mm. like, nah, I'm not going to play today. But there was a really good game um, called California Games for the Atari Lynx. It was the best surfing game ever. That was good fun. I used to love that. So, um, yeah, mm. w well worth getting one if you can find one on the Ebays that works and is a reasonable price. Uh, they're, they're no doubt going for extraordinary money now, and I'm, which I'm a bit annoyed about because I had one that was pristine and I sold it for next to nothing. <clears throat> Another I, eBay disaster that was. Well, you know, if it makes you feel any better, when I bought it, I actually flipped it for like three times what I paid for it. Um, <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Steam Deck. Tell, tell people about the Steam Deck. It's basically a PC in a handheld console, isn't it? It is. And I think if people looked at it, they might think it looks like a Nintendo Switch. It does. Although I have to say, I a lot of people don't like the design. Um, okay. because they don't like the placement of the, the joystick controllers at the top. And uh, perhaps, Tom, during the edit, could you just, at this point, pop up a picture of the Steam Deck for our esteemed viewers on uh, youtube.com forward slash the Constant Geekery podcast uh, so you can see what we're talking about. Um, I actually think the design looks really good. I think it works well. And unlike the Switch, it's got more to hold on to. More grippage. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had a long gaming session on the Switch, but it is a bit uncomfortable because it's too narrow yeah I, I i don't do as much gaming as i'd like to these days and when i when i do it tends to be on a pc with the joystick and that kind of thing so um i haven't had that experience i've only played on my son's switches sort of you know a little bit of mario kart with the, the detachable end bit so i haven't had that experience but i can imagine that you get a bit of fatigue yeah so i i think this looks really good and so you've got um, a couple of buttons on each side underneath. You've got two shoulder buttons on each side. Uh, you've got the thumbstick on each side. You've got a D-pad on the left, your usual X, Y, A, B buttons on the right. But then on each side of the console, you've also got a touch-sensitive touchpad pad. Mm. so that you can play games <coughs> that require mouse control. But it's, it's all up to you how you do it. What I think is really interesting about this device uh, everybody's been been wanting Nintendo to release something like a Switch Pro. I mean, the Switch has been out a long time, hasn't it? What was it, 2015? Have they not done that? No, they, they released another Switch, but with an OLED display. 
and then they did pre-orders for that, and it's all gone a bit nuts. Okay. But so Nintendo's just selling the same hardware for years and years on end, and people want upgrades and everything else. Well, I'd argue you probably don't need it if the games work; it doesn't matter. Yeah. But quite. if you want to play AAA titles, you know, with amazing graphics on a handheld device, there is nothing out there really that can that can do it uh, until this. Now. What Valve have done is they've teamed up with AMD to make a custom APU to go in this. And it uses Zen 2 cores, but interestingly, RDNA 2 GPU architecture. RDNA 2 being the latest. So that's what's gone into the next-gen consoles from you know, the Xbox and the PlayStation. They've yeah. got RDNA 2, and that's the RX 6000 series of graphics cards. So that's the, the generation we're talking about. Uh, and they've optimized this thing so that it, it can play... AAA games on its screen, uh, which is a 720p display, or there or thereabouts. It's slightly larger than 720p, but that's that's the resolution they're targeting. At 60 frames per second, I think. For that's that, and if that's the case, that's pretty amazing that you can play those kind of titles. Yeah, I think some people have sort of come out and found titles that it's it's not likely to be able to. Of course. Of course. New thing comes out, someone picks a hole in it with something that, you know, is at the extreme. No. Nah. Well, I, I think it's a great idea anyway. I do. And what I suspect the it, if you get the settings right, and uh, the way it's going to work is if you're playing on the Steam Deck, there'll be some pre-optimized uh, graphic settings that Steam have set up for you. And you, but you can still tweak it to, to optimize your experience. So I could get one of these and play XCOM Enemy Unknown on it. In you DOS could. emulation mode. <laughs> Actually, en entirely possible because it, this is a PC. It's running Steam OS, which is uh, a Linux distribution. Okay. But there's nothing stopping you putting Windows on it. And in fact, Valve, uh, the company behind Steam, they, they're quite happy that people are going to do that. So it's entirely possible that people will put Windows on this and use Xbox, Windows games, use that yeah. that platform yeah, yeah. with it. Windows 11, maybe. Uh, well, yeah, why not? Actually, now I've said that, now that you've said it's on SteamOS, um, I, I think XCOM, anyway, I know, which is, I'm sorry, it's, it's a really old game, but it's very, very playable. Um, probably would work on, on that OS anyway. It's interesting when we talk about gaming, Pete, you're coming up with very old games and very old gaming consoles. So I, th I wonder what that actually says about you. It says that I probably don't need a Steam Deck. I'd probably be all right with a 286DX2. Probably would. Um, this is a dockable thing <coughs> as well. So uh, if, if you're going to say you want to use a, a mouse and keyboard, mm. well, you can dock a display. It's got a USB-C port and you can have a, a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse as well that's awesome or plug it into the dock as well if you want for wired gaming so conceivably if someone were to install i, I sense a video coming already windows on this mm. could they use it as their pc yeah absolutely <laughs> oh, we've got to do a video on that <laughs> steam deck in 2021 suitable for work <laughs> Well, we, we, we need to talk about when this is going to be released. But first of all, there are, there are three models available. Mm. And they're interesting the way that they they price them. So in UK pricing, uh, it's £349 for the base model. That's 64 gigs. Yes, but with eMMC storage. Yes. Now, I don't see how that's going to work. This this thing has a micro SD slot, but 64 gig drive. You've got your Linux OS. You've got Steam you, then you're, it's, it's not a many bit games. too small, isn't it? Really, it is. And eMMC, that's that's like SSD storage, only much slower. Mm. Mm. Whereas if you go up to the next model at 459, you get a 256 gig NVMe drive. I suspect that's the one that most people will go for. 110 pounds more. It, it's a it's a no brainer upgrade, really, isn't it? It's very clever pricing they've done there, and. And you can go up again another 110 to 569 pounds to get the 512 gig version. But that version also comes with an anti glare etched screen. And it also comes with not just a carrying case, which they all do, but an exclusive carrying case that is so exclusive, only anyone who's bought that one will have it. Excellent. And uh, a lot of people are buying these. So this is how Steam decided to sell these things. They set up a pre-order system, and you pay four pounds or five dollars 
for a, a spot in the queue. Whether you get your four pounds or five dollars back, I have no idea. Um, now I have got a spot in the queue. Have you? I have, and I did get it relatively quickly. But I've got to say, what an absolute farce it was. Their servers went down. You just getting it didn't work on iPad. Uh, yeah, so I had to get the, the laptop out to do it. And it took multiple attempts. I think it was the best part of 20 attempts I, I made before I, I managed to secure my position. And even then it said it had failed, but then I got an email saying it, it had succeeded. So have you got a bit of anxiety as to whether it has really succeeded? No, no. It's, it has, okay. I, so I have a place in the queue. Now what, what Valve are now going to do, and this really is very clever because they've basically just got a whole load of people to tell them how many they want, how many they need to build, and they've been paid for it. Mm. which is just crazy, but there we go. It's right out of Apple's handbook, I I, ha I will put to you, but yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Apple would probably take the whole money for the and then hand you a device and at some point in the future release software to give you all the features that the device... <laughs> or say, now we want the device back because it was only ever release, have a credit. Mm. Uh, regular viewers of the uh, and listeners of the podcast will know what we're talking about. Um yeah, so anyway, I finally got it ordered. So the, what all this means is that when they become available, those people who have got a place in the queue will be notified in order of when, when, they, they, when they've got into the queue and they will get so an opportunity get, to purchase. Is it a bit like when you go to the deli counter at the supermarket? Do you get a number to tell you what place you are in the queue? No, it doesn't. <laughs> oh. It doesn't tell you that. Because that would be great, wouldn't it? It's like, ding! Yeah. Your order is ready, Mr. Hurst. Mm -mm. Anyway, if you're early in the queue, and I was within 15 minutes of the pre-ordering opening, so I'm fairly confident I'm early in the queue, then uh, shipping starts in December this year. However, those who are ordering now are probably waiting until middle of next year. It's okay. It's been extremely popular. How many of those orders, though, will convert into... Because it's such a low amount of money. Mm. I think they, they could have fixed this by asking for a bigger deposit. If it was £100 or $100 to reserve one, I think yeah. fewer people would have been doing it. It would have been a better experience for everybody. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, I really appreciate you getting in the queue for me. That's really kind of you. Mm -hmm. um, it does bring a, a sort of point to mind, though, about these releases of products that seem to happen now, where you get a particular time on a particular day where the order's open. And... This is just a terrible idea, isn't it? Because it, there's only one thing that's absolutely guaranteed to happen, and that is that your servers are going to go down. Yeah, probably. And it seems that none of these companies are capable of anticipating the fact that they're going to get a whole bunch of load for the first couple of hours, and therefore they don't have any capacity. They don't seem to put enough capacity on to cope. Why do they do it? So you've got all these people who are just incredibly frustrated. Wouldn't it be better just to say hello, here's a new product, it's available to purchase, come and buy it. Or, hello, we've made a new product, it's going to be available here, you can reserve it, and but you we, can go and do that now. But we don't work like that anymore, do we? We do, As a society, we don't work like that. Everything's crowdfunded, everything's, you know, fake it till you make it, assess demand before you actually go for something. That That's what people do these days. In, in actual fact, um, something I, I'm going to shoehorn in I'm going to shoehorn it into the um, to the podcast because um, I think it is relevant to this. Um, have you heard of Lumina? Yes. Yeah. So there's a really good example. So Lumina, for those that don't know, is basically a, a 4K D, uh, DSLR-esque camera with depth perception and machine learning. Uh, it's basically a webcam. Um, but it's it's meant to deal with a lot of the lighting issues that you can sometimes get, unless you've got you know, a really good lighting set up. Uh, it's, it's meant to give a, a superb experience at a fairly reasonable price. Looks like a great idea. I've signed up uh, for it, but again, it's a very similar thing. I've signed up to say, yes, I would like one. No concept as to when. You know, the Kickstarter program says they're going to be available from August, but will they? Who knows? But that's how things happen these days. That's how, how things go. I, I think you can pretty much guarantee that uh, if it's a Kickstarter campaign, it's not going to be ready on the date that they say it's going to be ready because I haven't experienced that ever. Every time I've supported one of those things, it's been a disaster. Yeah. I, do, do you remember, remember that? 
Go on. Are you going to say about that um, phone that was also a, a Unix computer? That yeah, the Planet, Planet Computers, I can't even remember what it's called, Gemini, I think. <clears throat> and you might be familiar. They still sell them. They have, they have a, a couple of different versions. But the thing they're still selling is exactly the same as the one I bought off of Kickstarter. And what happened with that is that uh, it, the delays went on, the delays went on, and then they introduced a new model, as I recall it, with a different spec, and they shipped those first. So the people that had been earliest in the queue, you know, I, my number was less than 2,000, you know, I was one of the first first people in there, and I I got it last, it seemed. It took absolutely ages, and it was a long time after they said it would be, and it didn't have the features that they said it would have. And uh, mine broke pretty quick. The keyboard broke on it, and in fairness, they did fix it for me. But by that time, I was fed up, and I flogged it on on eBay. Mm -hmm. But it, it it is a sad thing that we live in this. I mean, again, we we often hark back to the eighties and the nineties when tech was, you know, more accessible for businesses to build. Whereas now, unless you're a, an Amazon or a Google or an Apple, there's so much investment to get the level of sophistication. I mean, you just, just take Lumina as an example, a four K DLL. D, I can't say it. DSLR. Thank you. Webcam. Uh, you know, the technology packed into that is, is significant, and it's a significant investment to tool up and build those, design it and build them. So people, unless you're a Google and Apple or an Amazon or someone of that kind of clout, then you need to do it this way, and you, you need to hope that people will support you and that things will get off the ground. I'm not so sure that applies to Valve. I've got no idea of their finances, but I think they're doing pretty okay. They make a huge amount of money. Mm. Uh, yeah, they, they can certainly afford to make, make this thing. Um, a lot of, it's a fair point, you know, you think about old British companies like Acorn, who founded Arm. Mm -hmm. And we used to have, in this country, there used to be more in the way of silicon foundries. I think there still might be one or two in this country, possibly one in Wales. Um, but most of the the foundries are now overseas, aren't they, in, in Asia, China. Yeah. So a lot of these products are, are going over to China. So if you're trying to make something like this and you've got to get it prototyped, there's that uh, possible communication barrier plus the distance barrier. Logistically, it's hard to to get it right. And I know that one of the things that happened with the Planet Computers that we just spoke about was that the the company that was building it in China actually changed the spec of it and sent them a load of devices with different CPUs into what they'd actually spec because, and this kind of thing happens and then they're left picking up the pieces and with all the angry customers. So I think it, you, you are right. I think it's very challenging to bring something like that to market. And there's probably a, a lesson to be learned there, which mm. is don't go pre-ordering stuff that doesn't actually exist yet, like Valve Steam Decks. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> there is talk about more foundries being built in other parts of the world, isn't there? I think there's talk of one being built in Ireland um, by maybe Samsung. Uh, yes, I think I've heard that. Um, it, and, and that's more in response to the global chip shortage that continues hmm. and is probably the reason why there is no Apple MacBook Pro with some Apple silicon in it yet. Yeah, I've got, I'm fairly confident that that's the reason why we haven't seen those things yet. Uh, which brings us neatly, Pete, to the, the new segment of the show. Uh, we don't have any kind of like theme intro music to this section or anything I think yet. we should get some. We probably should. Should we get some? Okay. Welcome to the rumour mill. Excellent. Thanks for that That's little right. jingle there, Pete. That's, <laughs> I imagine nobody switched off during that. Very catchy. Um, so I've picked, I've picked something from India Today Tech. Okay. Pete, mm. That go to resource that I always go to for my tech. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, and pray tell, what, what are they uh, rumoring? Well, they were, they were tweeting about uh, the new MacBook Pro, which they say will come with an M1X chipset and a squared off design. So, what they mean by a squared off design is that the, the corners of your current MacBook will become more square. But not completely square. Perhaps, for, for example, Pete, exactly like this Razer laptop here. Ah, uh, okay. More, so it's less of a blunt instrument if you want to bludgeon someone with it. Perhaps. Yeah, okay. But again, we don't want to talk about your sideline work during the podcast, <laughs> um, Pete. It's called wet work and we don't talk about it and it only happens at the weekends. Um, um, they're also saying it will have a mini LED design. And uh, this is the, the critical piece of this 
highly informative rumour, Pete, uh, that it may launch sometime between September and November. Hang on. Can I just check there's not a translation issue there? Are you sure it's may launch sometime between September and November? So it could be any time between May and November. <laughs> no, I think it's September and November. I, okay. What I think about this, uh, this is a classic example of, uh, I don't know India Today Tech. It's the first time I've ever seen anything from them, so I don't mean any rudeness to them at all. But this is just click. Well, you wouldn't. it's not click bite. Click bite? Clickbait is I've a just invented something completely new. Clickbait. Um, it, it's just, it's rubbish, isn't it? I mean, this is not revelation stuff, is it? This is, look, oh. will the new MacBook Pro come with an M1X chipset? Yeah. Yeah, great. Well, so that's what a fantastic prediction that is. A squared off design? Well, Probably. they're not going to make it any more rounder, are they? <laughs> so. The MacBook Pro oval donut. Uh, mini LED design, I mean, I think that's... That's, that's a, a given. given. Yeah, everyone knows that's going to happen. May launch sometime between September and November. Well, that's bet, really flipping precise, guys. And they haven't even put a year. <laughs> <laughs> May launch sometime in 2021. I, I think this is an example of someone um, jumping on the rumour bandwagon for some <laughs> click action. Yeah, whereas we just tack on the rumour mill to the end of our... Uh, our podcast and don't put it in the the thumbnail. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. Do, do you do you enjoy hearing us um, lambast people for for doing silly things and posting silly information? Or have uh, we become too cynical? Have we become too I cynical uh, or passive aggressive? Apparently, oh. I was accused of that the other week. Um, I just say more aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> There's no passiveness. No, it's been. actively. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway. But these, these kind of rumours, though, they, they're, they're constantly doing the rounds on Twitter. And, and the problem is that people actually pay attention to them. Mm. And it's this, it's this that builds up all the hype and the excitement, and which then leads to the inevitable disappointment. And we all get caught up in it. Mm. No matter how much we, we think we, we can stay clear of it all, it, it has an effect oh, on it us. It absolutely does. So, But that having been said, India Today Tech, those are pretty, pretty nailed on rumours, really, aren't they? If you had to traffic light it, I'd say, yeah, mostly green for all of mostly those things. I, th I think that's it's it's a likely thing. I don't think they're telling anybody anything that isn't already widely known. I mean, yeah. it, it stands to reason that they would bring out the new notebooks between September and November because the first M1 notebooks were released, was it October and November time mm -hmm. last year? So a year's gap, well, that makes a lot of sense, unless the silicon shortage continues that. to bite. Yeah. Uh, mini LED design, I think we are expecting that to come because they've put it in the latest iPad. There, there's talk of it coming into the uh, the new iPad mini. Lots of rumours about that, that it will have a mini LED display. Um, I'm not really fussed about that, I've got to say. Right. I don't, don't care about a mini LED display. I don't think it's that great. I don't like the shadow around the edge of the screen. Have you got a shadow on yours? Have yeah. You? I haven't got one on mine. No. Mm. It's annoying. I, I, do you know what? When I'm typing in Word and I rescale, it's fine. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really good. I'm so pleased to be here. Excellent. Um, so have we had any other rumours? I, I spotted another one. and I, I'll be honest, I, I don't spend a, a huge amount of time scouring the, the tweets for the rumours. But uh, a tweet from iDevice Care, which says that the MacBook Pro M1X will have a UHS-2 SD card slot. Um, I'm not convinced about that. However, it has been doing the rumour mills, hasn't it, that uh, there would be an SD card slot on the new MacBook. And since you are in the market for a 16-inch Apple Silicon MacBook, do you want an SD card slot on your MacBook, Pete? Yes. Would you like that SD card slot to be UHS-2? Tell me what that is. Faster. Yes. There we go. So, um, I mean, it, it was there. It was ubiquitous for years, wasn't it? the SD slot mm. card slot on the, the MacBook Pro. And it was convenient that, you know, at the moment we're in Dongle City. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I find those dongles don't last that long. Mm. So actually, if you had a decent quality one in the chassis, happy days. I, I wonder what you're doing with your dongle, Pete, to, to make it so fragile. <laughs> well. Um, have you got any rumours, Pete? Um, I have got one, actually. So this is an extension. Do you remember that um, at WWDC we heard about the Apple Watch will have um, hand gestures? 
yeah. to be able to control it. Yeah, I yeah. Vaguely remember that, and it will basically use the twitches in your nerves. Well, gone beyond that for the next release. Okay, someone is saying that it will actually be able to use eyelid tracking to control. So, for example, you know, if you, if if Siri's asking you something, you can blink once to say yes or no, is twice, and that that kind of thing, as I understand it. So basically, eyelid control of your Apple Watch. Is anyone saying that, though, Pete? Yeah, one person's saying it, and that's me. Uh, and that's how silly some of these rumours get, is one person with no followers, and let's be clear, we've got nearly a 1,000, <laughs> makes <laughs> makes some kind of obscure tweet, and then suddenly everyone's latching onto it. So let's see how many t how many people start talking about eye-activated Apple Watches. Do you know, that would actually be really funny. If, if I didn't care about my reputation, then I'd, I would indeed tweet about that <coughs> and see what happens. <laughs> or do a video on it. Maybe, maybe we should just create a, a, another a, a anonymous Twitter account and just do it and see what happens. Just as a social experiment. It, it is amusing. I, I did see, I'm not going to name name the tweeter or anything uh, but i did see a tweet from someone with very few followers who's saying i can confirm and there proceeded then to be a bunch of rumors that he was confirming about the the latest uh, apple releases to come I can confirm and uh yeah you can't confirm anything it's it's, it's a bit like it, there's certain phrases isn't there people use to try and either reinforce or the other one i like is people say i'm often asked or people have been asking me insert topic that I now want to talk about when no one has ever asked you about that. <laughs> it's just like... Oh. Makes me laugh. Anyway, I... I so I've obviously, done some videos where I've, I've said that, but actually people, people have do, do actually ask you. Yeah, just to be clear. But so, anyway, grading that rumour, on the basis it's come from me and I completely made it up and it's silly and it has no practical thing, that's... In terms of the likelihood of rumours on the um, conspiracy theory level, I think that's as likely as uh, Jeff Bezos being the reincarnated um, child of Elvis and JFK and actually coming from the moon. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, did you see Jeff Bezos' spaceship? I have seen that spaceship. That's all I'm going to say. Brings me back to the to the comment about dongles. Yes. Um, I saw a funny tweet the other day where someone said... <laughs> Are UFOs just billionaires from other planets? <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Quite possibly. Yeah. Uh, you just know. How, I don't know how long that, that Amazon spaceship's been in, in development, but Jeff oh, Bezos, time. yeah, however long ago it was, it's just said, when they said, what do you want it to look like? Apart from the fact it's got to fly, you know, and be aerodynamically sound, he just said, go and watch Austin Powers. That's what I want it to look like. I think we should move on. We have a lady in the room, Pete. Okay. We shouldn't be talking about these things. Um, let's go on to our final point, which was, I'm sure you mentioned it somewhere in the notes and I've lost it, but uh, an Apple event. You were thinking, is there yeah. going to be an Apple event before the inevitable kind of iPhone event? Which is typically September. Hmm. I'm going to say no. I'd like there to be one, so I'm kind of willing there to be one. But, I mean, September's only five weeks away um, as it stands today. So are, are Apple going to squeeze another event in, in August when a lot of people are on holiday? I doubt it. No, I, d I don't think so. I can't see that happening. I, I think it, yeah, like you say, September. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't guarantee that we'll see anything about Apple Silicon at the iPhone event. No, either. I don't think so, because they, they will want to keep that to the iPhone crowd. Mm. And it depends how exciting the new iPhone is, and I'm going to say possibly not very exciting. I think it's going to be an iteration, because last year's iPhone, the 12, was the 12, wasn't it? Mm. It was quite, a, quite an exciting launch, I'd say. Mm. Although, having recently upgraded my phone, and I do now have a 12, um, I would say it doesn't really do anything differently to the previous one other well, than it's got 5g which which i do get bizarrely a smattering of 5g at my home interesting in the middle of nowhere interesting but um i tested it out in the middle of the of the city of bath mm. last week and got 330 something megabytes a second download or oh. megabits and what did you get yeah. up uh not very much right okay in comparison but down download speeds were, were pretty hot but, you know, going back to what you're saying about phones, 
when when has a new phone iteration when was when was it that a new phone actually excited you in terms of it's got a killer feature on it that it's like oh wow that is amazing as opposed to yeah, I, I actually feel sorry for phone designers because they've got to come up with something every year, haven't they, that they can market as this is, you know, we've redefined smartphones, that kind of thing. And it's like, it's h- how much more can you do? So can I tell you the last phone I got properly excited about? Oh, I've walked straight <laughs> into this, haven't I? I know exactly <laughs> what you're going to say. It was uh, it was the Lumi. <sighs> The Lumia 930. Oh, what operating system did that run, Lumia? Dave? Lumix? I can't remember. No, Lumia. That's Lumia. Right. That's right. I'm thinking Panasonic. Mm. No, it, it ran the, the Windows Phone operating did system. It? Uh, did it? And that excited you, did it? Okay. It was a beautiful design as well. It it looked a lot like the current iPhones, I have to say. It, was, it had it was a, orange, I seem to recall. I had the orange one. So it had an orange back, and it had the stainless metal sides just like the iphone and then the top the piece of glass say it had a bevel around the edge which just made it look it was it was a nice looking thing and it had a really good camera in it as well i and, seem to uh, remember that was the back sort of like a sort of sort of dyed dolphin skin it had a kind of texture to it didn't it <laughs> dyed I, I don't think i've ever felt any dolphin skin dyed or otherwise <laughs> so <laughs> I've got no idea what you're talking about. Pete. Well, it's just got that. It had that sort of smooth rubbery that I expect a dolphin skin feels like. People swim with dolphins. What does dolphin skin feel like? Tell us. Probably not a Windows thing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like Can we've imagine, descended into some very bizarre. Imagine holding a dolphin up to you. That would be a that would be a, a game changing phone, wouldn't it? The dolphin phone. It'd be a bit heavy. Well, folks, uh, you heard and saw it here first. Pete has officially gone mad. And uh, I think this is the right time for us to bring proceedings to a close. Definitely. Before you come out with anything else. Uh, so thanks very much for watching and or listening to us on the Constant Geekery podcast. I'm pretty sure we'll be back again next week. Will we not? Should be. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. So we'll see you next week. Cheerio. Cheerio. Dolphins. <laughs>